Hey everybody, it's Brian here from quantlabs.net. Uh, today is a milestone. This is my third video on my march to building a open source trading platform specifically in high frequency trading. What I'm about to show you is the reason why everything's done in C++, in R, and specifically in Linux. What I'm about to show you is something that is mind-blowing, that probably the second fastest possibility to do live trading in a high-frequency trading environment. This is outside compared to something like FPGA or CUDA or GPU or however you want to put it. This is probably uh, the second fastest, and I'd say second fastest, outside of using C++ and the GSL, otherwise known as a new scientific library, where you have a C++ library with a thousand functions that support scientific and math functions. Um, but outside of that, this is the next best way of doing it, and specifically when you blend in R uh, and how these two uh, languages like R and C++ can be bridged together. This is very powerful, and this is uh, what I'm about to show you. First, um, I want you to come over to a person by the name of Dirk. I hope I, I pronounce this right. Um, Edelbutel. <laughs> I hope I got that pronunciation right. This person, and he's got a uh, maybe a team, a bunch of contributors that are that are, that are just contributing this mind-blowing technology that amazes me. Um, that uh, if, if you followed me years ago uh, with MATLAB and the coder where you can take a MATLAB script in MATLAB uh, and then use a MATLAB coder toolbox to bang out your C++ code, I thought, wow, that's pretty cool. $6,000 toolbox, never mind that. And plus the uh, code that's generated is not exactly all that clean. Um, it it's somewhat can be bloated. Um, and then there's other alternatives like uh, JBuilder and .NET Builder and working with the MATLAB DLLs or however it's done, it's really ugly. Just just ugly, ugly, ugly. And again, there's the cost of having to uh, work with, or sorry, the cost of MATLAB itself, which is a few thousand dollars and all the toolboxes, so you're running up quite a bill. What I'm about to show you costs nothing. It's 100% open source. Open source technology, you can access the source code at any step of the way of what I'm about to show you. So, MATLAB's out of the way. Let's talk about RCPP and R. This guy, Dirk Edelbutel, <laughs> has developed something really, really revolutionary. He's updating it. It's well maintained. I uh, got the attention of Google. I've got a video on it on, on uh, his Google Talk Tech or Google Tech Talk. But never mind that. Um, what I'm specifically interested in is something called R inside. This R package, or whatever you want to call it, API, whatever, enables you in a C++ program be able to call R. Pretty cool. Now I've done this in C++ or in Java and C sharp. It's a lot slower than doing it this way. So you come in uh, here under this uh, URL. And you come to the bottom, and, and, and you'll find, or somewhere midway, you'll find this uh, download section. So this will take you to here. So always download the latest versions of R inside. You get a tarball. You have to have that, obviously, in your uh, Linux environment. So my Linux environment, as we've, I've I'll also shown a few other videos. So I'm using Oracle uh, VM VirtualBox, which is free. I'm using uh, Ubuntu. Uh, desktop which is free um, and uh, I've got everything all set up namely uh, there's a few little tricks that you should know about before we start proceeding because now we're going to start working with R and C++ and all that in this Linux environment with, uh, in this uh, virtual machine there's a few things you need to be aware of um, if you come to my R blog here uh, let me just open up another, uh, actually, yeah, if you come into my R blog, uh, you'll find uh, a, uh, a posting on how to, <clears throat> let's say if you want to upgrade your, uh, your, um, 
you, you're, uh, you know, you can do things like apt get, all that to, to install your Ubuntu whatever package. But you install R. I'm I'm hoping you know how to do that. I've got a posting here where for this version, which I'm using Natty of Ubuntu, it takes you to R version uh, uh, 2.12, I believe. Um, but uh, in in my case here, uh, I have 2.15 already installed. But if you try just to install the basic version of R, you're, it might take you to 2.12 or something like that. But I've got a posting here that uh, shows you how to install uh, and upgrade to the latest version of R on your Ubuntu. Okay, uh, so that's cool. Um, so then, another important step you'll need to do is to install uh, R Studio. Now, this this whole posting shows you how to install the R inside the R CPP. I'm gonna I'm gonna walk you through that right now. But it, it's just so you're aware it. It, it exists here. So <clears throat> when you come into uh, our studio, which is now installed on my uh, Linux or Ubuntu Linux environment, the nice thing about this is that I, you know, I can install all my R packages in a nice clean way instead of having to do it on a, uh, a Linux terminal. So I'm sitting here in our studio, and under my packages, I can easily install my um, my uh, R packages that I need for something like RCPP, R inside, or whatever else I need. Let's come under packages, install, and you're going to use a local whatever CRAN uh, repository, uh, and you just enter in your um, package and that's it so in my case I can easily install armadillo or whatever so we'll install it it will build it within your R studio uh, environment or your R environment itself remember I'm using R as the underlying uh, uh, process so that's all cool now what I'm about to show you I'm, I'm sitting in a uh, in my uh, uh, my um, environment here under a terminal and what I want to show you now <clears throat> is under my uh, workspace uh, I have uh, R inside which is that uh, uh, the uh, zip the uh, tarball or zip the tarball this is this guy what we're looking at this is expanded now Okay, so if you come under inst, I guess, you'll find all the examples reside under here, under examples. Um, and uh, obviously when you come under standard, let's say, which is standard examples, I assume you just do a make, okay? The make file is there uh, and everything should be fine. Um, and it builds, uh, as you can see. Now, I want to run a couple of these R inside uh, uh, samples. I'll just choose one, I don't know, one. So let's do that. So here we go. We're now running this R inside sample. So let's take a look at that um, source code for that example. Uh, so that was number one we looked at. I'm just going to open it. And here's the source code. Uh, this is C++, obviously. Uh, we include the R inside. Okay. Um, uh, and what we're doing is, this is the code itself. This is really, 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 really cool. See how clean this is? We set up a session for our R. So we're now creating our embedded R instance. Okay. So this is getting its own separate runtime environment for that R session. Now here's the source code for R. All this stuff. Okay. And uh, we can intermingle, I guess you could say, between the C++ on the C++ side within the C++ code and call R and, and do our, our scripts. Um, so this is the um, uh, amazing thing about it. So let me jump back to my, uh, to my uh, session here. This, this is what we're looking at right now. 
Okay. Um, this output. Um, yeah, let me just uh, try to put this side by side here so you can see how it looks. So, you know, we've, we're, we're, we're running, showing, uh, all this stuff. This is the, uh, the, um, the matrix Z. Uh, and then we're outputting Z right here. This is all, this is, these, these, these calls are R functions. Okay. That's, that's the beauty of this. This is, this is, this is, this is amazing. So if that doesn't, uh, blow your mind, um, what we're doing right now is this is the powerful thing, especially when it comes to something like, um, uh, in an HFT environment. Let's say we get our market data come in. We build a matrix here, which is a C++ code. We're using this to build within our R session, our R environment, or call it whatever you want, the embedded environment of R. So we're now creating a new R environment, a new matrix called M within R. The R, the R session now has a matrix called M by this line. And it's passed from the C++ matrix called MDIM. Okay, um, so it's right here. Okay, so that is how clean it is within uh, C++. Now this is where it's going, getting really exciting because now we have our M uh, matrix in the R runtime environment. We can now start manipulating M the matrix within the R runtime environment, all through these functions right here. Okay, so that's what's what's being outputted here. Um, so instance, we're printing M. So that's as, as if you were in the uh, environment of R or in R session within its own R uh, R session. Um, and basically. Uh, yeah, it's it's unbelievable how this works, and so obviously we're passing Z or the column sums of Z and all 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 this stuff. Okay, um, I I I think this is this is this is so mind blowing. So now uh, this is all R, okay, all R calls, and now we're gonna go back. Okay, so we're par uh, we're uh, returning here our string from that R set of calls which I'm, I still have to investigate this but now we can pass that back into C++ and have that as part of a C++ object within the C++ code again all in C++ this one C++ uh, program app whatever you want to call it okay and now let me just maximize this. And now we have a vector here called V from the R environment. Unbelievable. Okay. And now we're sitting in C and printing out the output of V from uh, a copy of M from the R environment. Confusing, I know, but when you watch this, look how small that code is. If I showed you the MATLAB way, you'd be pulling your hair out, and and you'd be asking yourself, why would you pay f f MATLAB or or whoever to do ugly, ugly code when you can do all this within C plus plus and R? This is so so exciting for me. Um, and 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 if you can't figure it out by now, this is probably the most mind bending. Uh, altering a video I've ever done out of the 200 plus YouTube videos and the other countless I've done in my membership. This is uh, 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 so monumental um, in terms of building a, a high frequency environment, high frequency trading environment. Okay, so that is um, the basic R with R inside within a C++ program. Holy. Um, Okay, so I'm going to show you another one. Um, I think it's called uh, 10. Uh, no. Maybe it's 9. Oh, I know, I know which one it is. It's 11. Okay, 
So here we have the ability to display a graph from R. Okay, I'm going to show you that now. This is breaking out the code. I don't know. I, I got to figure that out. Um, but that's that's a minor thing. But let me show you that that example. That's uh, sample code number eleven. Okay. So if I go to my number eleven right here, I'm going to show you that code. Okay. So I've shown you and walked you through all the R, R statements all through like here. Okay. Um, but you're probably asking yourself where, oh where, oh no I got the wrong source file, uh, right here, okay this is it, uh, number 11, yes, okay, so again we got some R going on, but guess what it's doing right here, PNG and R call, boom, boom, okay, and don't ask me why it doesn't finish up, I, I don't know why I have to figure that out. Um, if anyone wants to leave a response on that, would be awesome. But, uh, yeah, so you can also generate graphs or plots of R for R, R ones within your C++ uh, program. Unbelievable. Oh, but, but you're probably, I'm hoping your jaws dropped enough by now. But, <laughs> no, this is where it even gets better. Okay, so we're going to move out of the standard examples. And uh, there's something called uh, MPI. Now, what MPI is, is for parallelization. Uh, it's an open MPI for parallelization. So let, I want to show you some. I've never played with this MPI, but if 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 you see me in the past, go on about parallelization with from within the world of R. But now we're taking it one step better and being able to parallelize. Um, with all our data residing in the C++ side, being able to parallelize on our C++ side, as well as call individually our, our scripts. So let me show you some examples. Or I'm going to run. Now I'm, I, I'm not familiar with this a whole lot. I'm sure I might post some more exciting stuff as I get to it. Um, I don't know. I'm just going to do R inside 1. Okay. Actually, no. 0 might be a better one. Okay, now if you followed me before with the Redis and, and uh, all that stuff within R, you see here we, 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 we can somehow control a number of nodes, no different than workers. So um, let me just show you the code. Now remember, I'm not familiar with this, so please don't beat me up over my, over my head over this. But um, we're just looking at R inside. Um, uh, R inside CPP zero. So here are all the MPIs. We've got MPI for parallelization, um, and then we got our MPI calls to set up. We're setting up our R inside here. Here's our usual R calls. Okay. Um, actually, no. We're building a string here. Uh, we're doing a cat. This is the R R piece right here and we're closing out our um, our uh, MPI so here somehow if I can figure out how to set up these nodes and all that fun stuff uh, we can now parallelize uh, from the world of C++ calling R and at the same time using our data um, now again uh, that's just with R inside RCPP. In a previous video, I've shown you how to use uh, Redis. Now imagine you take the Redis to, for persistence to stuff uh, your data, your market data, into the Redis or whatever. I'm sure you can see the potential here. It's, it's quite, quite, quite powerful with the C++. So all in all, I just want to show you this capability. It's very, very, very powerful. Um, and it just takes... Everything I've done in the last little while, maybe last year or so, to a new, new level with my own uh, high-frequency tr uh, trading platform. Very powerful stuff, and I, I'm hoping you uh, get an idea of how powerful this stuff is. Anyways, uh, we continue our march to high-frequency trading with our own platform. All open-source technology. Mind-blowing, mind-blowing.